Hansel, thank you so much for being with us today. We're really grateful to have you join us and to um, learn more about your journey of rewilding. And so often when Angus and I are talking about rewilding love, we're often talking about romantic relationships, but you're going to share with us more about what you've experienced, not just in your romantic relationship with your husband, but also with your mother and other relationships in your life. And I think it's really helpful for people to understand that rewilding love is about rewilding any relationship, including our relationship with ourselves. Yeah, Zul, I'm really excited to hear what you have to share. So I'm, I'm looking forward to speaking with you today. And for full transparency, Azul is another valued member of the rewilding team. Uh, Azul is uh, sort of our right hand person in terms of helping sure that things stay on track and that projects get completed and has an incredible capacity for organization and timeliness and really helps to keep Angus and myself in line. <laughs> <laughs> a, high, wow. a highly valued member. <laughs> That's right. Good at all those things I'm terrible at, right? <laughs> wow, thank you so much. Thank you for yeah. having me. I'm very uh, excited to be here. Yeah. And, and then also, in addition to the work that she does helping us on the back end, Azul is also a practitioner herself and um, working with people. And at some point, we will lose her and we will be very grateful for her, but very sad for us. <laughs> We'll be ready for that day when it comes as well. <laughs> One step at a time. That's right. Mm -hmm. So where would you like to start in terms of sharing how this rewilding metaphor that Angus and I have been putting into the world, how that has impacted you? What, at what point would it be good to start? I think the best would start with like with the actual beginning of my life. I, I promise it won't be a long story, but <laughs> it needs some background to understand. Yes. Yeah. Um, I was raised in a very, very, very dysfunctional family. There was a lot of violence involved, abuse, like several things that were happening. And being there, I grew up with the understanding that Apparently, I was the, ca the cause of that behavior. Mm. You know, as a little child, like you, like make some conclusions about what's happening. Absolutely. So, and I was told that that my parents got married because my mother was pregnant. So my understanding was, oh my God, I'm the cause of all of this suffering. Right. Right. Um. So through all my childhood, and even when I was a grown up, there was still a lot of violence, but. I went through a lot of therapy, like mm -hmm. I'm Argentinian and in Argentina, we all go to therapy. <laughs> I've been into psychoanalysis, guest at group therapy. You mentioned it, I was there. And that was quite helpful, uh, but that took me to the stage where I felt like, okay, I'm broken. Mm. Maybe I'm not quite enough but mm -hmm. I can function, you know, I could, I was able to have a life, a positive life, mm -hmm. but constantly feeling like a, a survivor, you know, like this is my story. This is a soul, the big team, you know, mm -hmm. and my story through the time was having like two different explanations. Like in the beginning, it was like, I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. I'm not allowed to be here, to be alive. Mm -hmm. And I was told that when I was a little girl, like mm. we shouldn't have had you. And yeah. that's something like very big to yeah. know. So it was very difficult for me to let go. But the other reason, I mean, the other way of understanding my life was, okay, I'm enough. She's a bad mother, you know? Mm. she's a bad person mm -hmm. like I was in the wrong situation so any of those roads really bring me to peace there was just ways of understanding my life right so what happened was that when I started uh, getting into this understanding and um, when I started rewilding my life my relationship with myself without looking without really trying something happened 
And it was the, I have a daughter, Amber. She's three years old now. She was one year and a half, I think, almost two at that point. And one day she did something, I don't remember, something stupid, something that toddlers do, I mean, nothing much. But that day, it was in the evening, I was very tired. I got really angry at her. Um, I don't remember what I say. I mean, it wasn't nothing big, but I saw how each thought I was having in the moment was enchained with a next thought and it was like darker and darker. It started with, oh my God, I have to solve this. She's doing it on purpose and more and more and more and more. So mm -hmm. I saw that train of thoughts, you know, and, and I didn't jump in, but I saw it. Yeah. And then I let it there. A couple of days after that, Amber did something like, Worse, and I remember because it, it involved water running all over from my bathroom to all my house. Oh my goodness! So I remember that one. So she came to me saying, "Mommy, mommy, look at this," and she was worried. And I was in a different mental state at that point. So when I saw the water, I found it hilarious, <laughs> and I started laughing. And she looked at me like, "Oh my, my oh my gosh, she's crazy." <laughs> so I said, "This is a wonderful opportunity for us to." really deep clean the bathroom you know like we have to clean everything <laughs> so it's like so I was laughing about that and then I saw oh my god my reaction was completely different you know so that made me so different in a different shape the way my mother was behaving all my life mm -hmm. because I kind of understood that she's like into a train of thoughts and she doesn't know it. She's very cocked up in that thinking. Mm -hmm. She has a thinking about everything is against her, you know, like a lot of thinking that really take her to a way of living that is like full of violence and aggression and she can't connect with others. But this time, I felt like I could like taste what it was being inside of her. Mm. And so when I saw that, that really helped me to see, oh, wait a minute. It's not about me. Like, it's not about if I'm enough or I'm not enough. I'm enough. Yeah. Because I'm alive because everybody is enough. Yeah. So what happened to me with her, it could happen to any other child living with her at that time. Mm. But I have seen something more that was that it is not about her being a good or a bad mom. She's a human being. Her nature is love. She's just very cupped up in her thinking. Mm. it doesn't say anything about her and that have changed my life because all my life I felt like or not enough or I'm the daughter of an evil woman mm. you know mm -hmm. and now I see myself like a daughter of a good woman mm -hmm. her nature is love she's just very caught up in her thinking Right now, we don't have a relationship because her behaviors are like the same. Mm -hmm. But I started to feel at that point and I'm still feeling it like a huge amount of love for her. Yeah. That I didn't felt like in all my life. Mm -hmm. Like in the past, before this insight, when I see a picture of her, something hurt inside of me something telling me like why doesn't she love me mm -hmm. how could you how, how could she have done this thing or this other thing because some terrible things happened mm -hmm. but now when I see a picture of her I feel love and it's not love that is expecting to be loved in return it's just an overflow of love no expectations attached. 
And in that moment, it was absolutely like a wonderful thing to experience because I felt a huge relief. Mm -hmm. it's, it was like if I was suddenly awake from a very long nightmare. Mm -hmm. And I saw myself with brand new eyes. And that slowly allowed me like to live in a different way because now I'm living like I'm a part of the world and I have something to add and I can enjoy. I don't need to earn love. Of course, I have my ups and my downs and sometimes all habit of thinking comes. But now I know what it's about and I'm able to navigate that more easily. And that really also like changed the way I was, I'm relating with Amber, my daughter, because at first when I wanted to be a mother, I was very, very, very afraid of having something inside of me that as soon as I got pregnant or the baby's born, I would go crazy and start the duct environment, you know, that there was something inside of me. When I was able to overcome that, I still was feeling a little like sorry for my daughter because she had a mother that was like less than enough. Mm -hmm. So I try to be a good mother, like doing things that mothers do that I have never seen in my life. But Pinterest has a lot of it <laughs> about how to be a good mother, best decoration, best cake, do these habits. So I was doing all of that. And when I realized my true nature, I was able to really connect with her without fear of going crazy. Because now I see that there is no gene that makes people crazy. It's like being cocked up in the in our thinking so oof, that really allows me to breathe and connect with her I love her and don't feel sorry for her mm -hmm. the same way I don't feel sorry for myself because all that I've been through really allowed me to really understand people when they are talking about these kind of experiences and also to really love life. Mm -hmm. Because before I felt like not connected, you know, like I'm here, I don't know why I'm here, but I was okay with living life mm -hmm. totally. And now, although I, I'm not afraid of death, but I enjoy being alive and connecting with people and making projects and, and uh, you know, like living, really living. It's a gift. And sometimes we forget about that. Well, thank you so much for sharing such a intimate and profound journey within yourself that sounds incredibly liberating as I listen to you. And that ability to access that inner freedom and inner love, your experience is a beautiful demonstration of how that is available and how that is the essence of who we are. And that what covers it up is the misunderstandings that we have in consciousness. And that even with the circumstances that you lived with that are real and true, and those really happened, what you're demonstrating is how the suffering was being perpetuated by those misunderstandings and not by the events, even though they were very painful. And I think that distinction is so important because we don't want to minimize those events or pretend that they didn't happen or not have empathy for your experience. But in terms of healing, in terms of growth and consciousness, we also don't want you to be limited to those events and defined by them. And, and what you're sharing, Azula, is such a beautiful demonstration of how your insight set you free inwardly. Absolutely. I, what I'm seeing more and more is that, I mean, I'm not condoning anything that happened. 
at all. But for me, I mean, I have received like physical violence, like a lot. And being out in the streets, not allowed to be inside of our home, you know, like lots of things. Mm -hmm. But the worst part of it, it wasn't the actual experience. It was the meaning I was making of it. Mm -hmm. And that meaning, I, I, it was like my, my luggage, you know, like I was carrying that meaning all around my life. Like, I know, like, mm. I just saw this like around one year and a half ago, and I'm almost 40 years old. So that was a lot of suffering mm -hmm. all these years, living life with all this misunderstanding. And one important thing that I, I would like to to say also is that although I feel this love toward my mom and I kind of understand everything, also my wisdom tells me that it's more safe for me and my daughter to not have a relationship with her right now because the behaviors haven't changed. Mm -hmm. And the behaviors haven't changed because they are not about me. Yeah. So that's the difference that I see. Sometimes we have to step at the side, you know, and, and leave some circumstances. Yeah. But now I'm totally in peace with that. And in the past, I was very worried about not having relationship with her. Like what would think, people think, you know, you don't have mm -hmm. a relationship with your mother. But now I'm in peace with that. Yeah, I can feel that. And for you to be able to see the self honoring choice and to not have judgment on yourself around that feels really huge as well. Mm. Yeah. Wow, Azul, what a, what a beautiful um, journey that you've been on. And, and thank you so much for sharing it. it. It just, for me, highlights an incredible shift in consciousness where you've realized that you're not defined by your thoughts um that we're all ultimately defined by our innate well-being and that's a and that's the healthy vantage point through which to look at our human experience uh and to see it from that vantage point you see your mother's psychological innocence and i think that's that's kind of like the secret source to be able to do life in a way where it suddenly looks so much easier when you can see we're all doing our best here based on our programming and our conditioning through the system of thought. Uh, and to realize that that's, that's not something that needs to identify us. That's just an illusion. Um, and that, that frees us all up to just love because we're coming from that, that essential nature of, of well-being, innate well-being. And, uh, and, and love is the feeling that's there. So I think it's, it's really lovely the way that you've seen this. And uh, this insight, I guess, has been developing over time, but I, I get the sense from the way that you articulate it, you see it really clearly, which is, which is kind of magical. Yeah. I mean, it, it is still magical for me because like, I don't know, in a few minutes when I realized that these like, circumstances were exactly the same, but I felt totally different. And, and that's where I see the power of all of this, because it allows you such a huge freedom to navigate whatever, and still like being fully connected with who you really are. I mean, for me, that's, that's the main thing. I, I didn't know who I was. I had a misunderstanding that defined me as less than enough. And now I see clearly, like, my real nature, I'm enough, and everybody is enough. Mm -hmm. Even my mother acting the way she acted. Like, everybody is doing the best they can. I, I see it. Uh, that doesn't mean that I don't set healthy boundaries. Mm -hmm. but setting healthy boundaries knowing that everybody's doing their best yeah and knowing that everybody's nature is love really helps to be in the world with connecting with people in a completely different way yeah an open-hearted way absolutely yeah. absolutely because 
like there is no fear if you know that everybody is doing their best and if you practice not to take things personally <laughs> that allows you re really like absolute freedom yeah it's very powerful and the the weight of judgment when i listen to your experience and i hear the shift what's really apparent is how painful the judgment was for you to be holding it the judgments against yourself the judgments against your mother and that when you saw in an experiential way her psychological innocence and your own psychological innocence in terms of your relationship with your daughter when you saw that and when you were able to extrapolate that experience and to see your mother through new eyes i mean that's the, an indicator of a shift in consciousness, you're able to see your mother very differently from a new level of understanding, the judgment naturally lifted. And, and that's the weight that dissolves. And we can't manufacture that on an intellectual level. We can know intellectually that judgment isn't a good idea. We can know intellectually that judgment creates suffering for ourselves, but it's not until there's that experiential shift in the way that you're describing it, that you genuinely see beyond judgment to what's more true, what's more real. And from that vantage point, uh, we just did an interview with uh, Jan and Chip Chipman, and uh, they talked about um, viewing from a different perch. It's like you view from a different vantage point and you see a completely different reality, even though the events, <clears throat> excuse me, the events still unfolded, what you see is very different. And the misunderstanding that somehow it meant something about you, somehow it meant something about your worthiness, your mother's behavior was an indicator about that, or even an indicator about her own worthiness. From that new vantage point, you saw what was more true and that nothing can really take away your innate value and worth as a human being. And nothing that she does can take that away from her either, even though it doesn't mean that it's uh, acceptable. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in the intellectual level, like I was understanding this, and even when I was into this understanding, I was like, yeah, 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 but my mother is an <laughs> exception, you know, like, you can't deal with that. But I wasn't looking like in a way that I could like connect with these in a different way. I wasn't looking for anything. It just happened that I saw that. And like, I really wish that every adult or even every teenager or every kid that has been through this type of experiences really like had the chance to see their real nature because mm -hmm. it's like removing like huge amount of suffering of the experience and you can leave them and they don't go back because you already you're already awake mm -hmm. mm. you know who you are so that's my my main intention sharing this story is that maybe somebody hears something new or have the chance to see it in a different way. But I know that no matter what, I have the feeling that everybody will see this at any point, at perfect mm -hmm. time. Yeah. I love the, uh, the metaphor that you use around luggage. It seems like, you know, if we're going to consider that the judgment that we carry around is like a whole bunch of luggage that really is surplus to requirements, that really the beauty of what you've seen is the ability to see that I can actually do this, this game of life and I can travel light. I don't need to be carrying around all this judgment. And it's the judgment that's the burden. It's the judgment that causes and creates the stress. And that, that you know, I know for one that I, whenever I travel, I can, the whole procedure of getting things on and off a carousel, putting things in the overhead bin, it's kind of like, it's a lot of stress and pressure. <laughs> <laughs> having everything unpacked and put back together again. It's kind of like, 
it is a little bit like the judgment that we carry around with us. We kind of feel like, oh, this is the appropriate time to unpack this. This is to, this is the time to open up my suitcase and, and show you what I'm feeling and experiencing. And just to suddenly see the psychological innocence on these terms, you realize you can just let all that go. You don't have to carry that around with you. Um, and I think that the beauty of that too is that other people get to experience that ease and grace that you know that that now we uh, are um, bringing to the table just in the way that we show up in life and that has a really profound effect too so it's just it is the it is such an amazing insight to have absolutely yeah. it was and an, I think it's still like unfolding like it never stops unfolding because there was a lot of changes in the way I connect with my daughter, in the way I show up with my husband, because now I, ha I don't have that baggage, so I can really connect, you know, I, <laughs> I'm not like half of my brain is in that story. Uh, and with friendships in a different way, a lot of like projects where I'm working on, it's like really, it was a major change in my life, but it came in an organic way, like with the rewilding metaphor right it's mm -hmm. not something like i was working on it i was just keeping in the conversation you know and and nothing much like that i mean i was there mm -hmm. i was open i was open i think that's important i was open to see something new yeah yeah having that open mind is so powerful in terms of being of support to others i think it helps for people to really hear what that shift is because it's very easy to hear well there's the before where you're really suffering and caught up in not feeling worthy and judging your mother and judging yourself and then you have um, a thought where you realize that that's not true and then all of a sudden life is different well people hear the before they hear the after and they're like but what what is that that happened like how does that happen how do you have that thought what makes that possible and i think what you're saying now in terms of having an open mind is part of that but there's also something that i think is really helpful about understanding the power of where we look and that's what rewilding is really pointing to is that we all have this innate intelligence within, within us. There is this intelligence behind life that is about moving toward health. It's about moving toward equilibrium. We see it in nature. We see it in our physical body and that it's available there for us on the psychological level, the mental and emotional level too. And that when it comes to trauma in the way that you're describing it, what's often so difficult is that we look for answers through an intellectual understanding of the trauma, or we look to reframe our thinking about the trauma as another way of saying an intellectual understanding about the trauma, or we, are get, we get so gripped by the events as you were describing that that's the direction that we keep looking in. And what I hear you sharing in terms of your experience is that you had an open mind, you were in a conversation that was looking towards your true nature, looking towards your innate health. And it wasn't as if you just looked in that direction and immediately something happened. But over time, through looking in this direction, through hearing things, through seeing things that you might not have even been registering on a conscious level, but by having the capacity to see that there was another place to look that is about health and well being and innate worthiness and essence of love, by looking in that direction, at some point you saw something new and fresh. So I'm wondering, is that how you would describe it? That's how I'm hearing it, but I'd love to hear more from you and your words about what you think about that. Yes, I think that's the way I will describe it because. Like, I was into this understanding, into the conversation. Um, I was in, into the rewilding community, so that appointed me to constantly look in that direction because this understanding is so different uh, to the way that we are taught 
how to how the mind works, how the world works, how people works. So I think the fact that I was like looking in that direction within the community, doing the training, like really helped me. Like I wasn't thinking about it. I was just pointed back and back to the to wisdom and love and to settle down. So I think that when I really was relaxed, like not mm -hmm. thinking about it, not with my intellectual mind, because the problem was that with all the therapy I was going, I, I went through in, in my past, like I thought like in all the details, I told the story a hundred times in different shades, in different ways. I speak with the, you know, and some therapists make you like, you have to speak with your mother, but this question is your mother now. So you talk with her, you write letters, you do hundreds of things. Mm -hmm. So my mind was already filled with a lot of details. So I, I think when I moved from that way of understanding life in an intellectual way, and also like when I started to really understand how the mind works, what happened with our moves, you know, what means to be cocked up in our thinking. That really was like creating the perfect environment for me to see something new. And I think that the only thing that, that people can do with, if they are looking to see something new, is just to be open and keep in this conversation because at mm -hmm. some point they will see something new. They will see what they need to see. <clears throat> And that could be very different from one person to another one. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's so amazing because I feel like it is a case of looking in a, in a certain direction and that we probably use our intellect to look, to look in that direction. But at some point when you have that insight, which obviously is so little to do with our own personal intellect it, it doesn't become a case of what we're looking for it becomes a case of how we look so it's it's almost for me we're looking from that that vantage point which is that place of innate well-being and we look from 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 that place and everything has a completely different complexion than looking at something through the eyes of our personal thinking. And it's just, it's almost like it's that switch over that's so difficult to sort of articulate to someone who's so used to using their intellect to sort of find answers and find solutions and find remedies and find a pathway to healing. <clears throat> when all along it was that simple change in opt optics that suddenly we look from that vantage point and then we can see the psychological innocence. We can see our own psychological innocence. We can see everybody's psychological innocence. We're all doing our best here. Um, but it is so interesting to consider how we get so invested in this is an intellectual search when it's anything but. It's just a change in vantage points. And then we yeah. look from that vantage point and we have a completely different lens through which to experience the world that we're living in. Yeah, absolutely. For me, I, I was, while I was listening to you, I, I was thinking about the difference when we look at the sunset, you know, I can look at the sunset and think about, oh, okay, there is a yellow, orange, pink, blue, okay, there's two birds, and blah, 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 and what I'm going to do next, oh, yeah, okay, two minutes, the sun <laughs> is going down, that's the intellectual way of yeah. looking at the sunset, you know, but if I just go there and admire the sunset, and just, you know, get myself lost in colors, feelings, I don't know, the sound of the birds, whatever. Then that really helps me to settle down and probably I will see something new about whatever I need. Mm -hmm. Or maybe not. It's like listening to music, like just enjoying the feeling or thinking about the, the musical mm -hmm. notes, you know, and, and what's happening under. Yeah. So... I think what happened is that through this understanding, you know, I, my husband is a musician, so we have a lot of metaphors around music because sometimes I try to explain him what I saw and I, I <laughs> try to use something that he's seeing. So I was telling him when I started this journey that like 
inside of me, I had like a, like a rock band, you know, <laughs> very heavy rock band that is playing very loud. And now I realize that there is also like one musician playing a sweet and gentle flute, you know, like in the background. Mm. So I can like only hear the rock band, you know, very loud. Or sometimes I can settle and like kind of, I mean, the rock band is still playing, but I'm hearing the flute. And that's for me is wisdom and it's always there. I, I don't have to look for it. It's always there, mm -hmm. but it's on me to settle down and, and like pay attention to the first thing I have here. That's the rock band or to settle down and listen to wisdom that is always there speaking me, speaking to me like slowly. Mm. and always like in a very patient way in a perfect timing to let me know whatever I need to know because now I really live life for real like everything I need to know it's revealed no mm -hmm. exceptions mm. and that's really like a different way of living mm. and, yeah. and these days like I see more and more that we all are like perfect exactly as we are even if i don't like any some behavior or maybe if i don't like one behavior i'm having but there is a reason for everything there is a learning in everything so it's always perfect and sometimes maybe my conscious is in a higher level and, and, and I see like more things and I act beautifully and other times I'm, I could be like a grumpy witch <laughs> in the morning. I could be that too. But there is a lot of relief on seeing that because I'm seeing more and more that I'm not in charge mm -hmm. in anything. Like I'm not in charge of how my life goes. I will see, I will have information, I will find a way but every time I think I'm in charge or other is in charge or I think judgment is the issue because I, I was I have the the habit of thinking around judgment that I judge other people or I judge everything that is happening with a plan okay this is how it should look this is how it looks and then I like compare mm -hmm. and now I'm seeing that if I can throw away the plan and I can really see what is there I really connect with what is there mm -hmm. and I find the beauty and the perfection in whatever mm -hmm. is there that's beautiful one of the other um, thoughts that occurs to me when I was listening to your metaphor about the rock band and the flute there's there is such a a beautiful experience where we're, when we're able to tune into our wisdom but there can also be uh some upheaval that happens when we become more embodied and less in our intellect and that often in the journey of rewilding it, it is a spiritual journey as far as angus and i would see we would say that it's a spiritual journey but it's it's not the kind of spiritual journey that you get to be like a, a zen monk sitting at the top of a mountain all blissed out it's there's an aliveness in it there's a vitality in it that includes all of our human emotions mm -hmm. and that it's actually through opening up to our humanity and being willing to be in the experience of who we are and the full range of our psychological experience that we get to hear that flute more clearly that we get to uh, have deeper experiences of who we are beyond our psychology mm -hmm. and so I'm just wondering was <clears throat> <clears throat> any of that coming up that way for you in terms of dropping out of your head and into the present moment was there also um, a rewilding on the emotional level and there may not have been a, but I'm just curious yeah there was because I <laughs> because I had a lot of judgment about which emotions were appropriate and which not uh, so yeah I I started to I mean, I wasn't trying, it just happened that the range of emotions got like bigger, like I was allowing myself to feel anger, you know, uh, even to feel sadness or depression. 
but knowing that everything you know like just gets through me mm -hmm. like without being in fear of oh my god i'm feeling anger and you know for me it's like when i watch a tv show i'm watching a tv show and i love the character the first the i'm not watching the the tv show thinking oh my god she shouldn't be feeling <laughs> anger she should be like polite and blah 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 and oh my god she's depressed she's i'm just enjoying the experience of seeing her through all the range of emotions in fact the the shows that we all love are the ones that the characters are showing like more and more emotions <laughs> and different experiences like so i realized that i wasn't doing that with myself mm -hmm. so my thought was okay what about if i just live <laughs> you know and really live my life inside of me just allowing myself to feel whatever it's here for me to feel without fear and really connecting what what is like also in practical levels it's not like suddenly everything is rainbows and unicorns and it's not like that at least for me now but in in the past i was like wanting to you know i i wanted to illuminate myself and be always <laughs> polite and perfect answer every time never angry with anybody and that's not real life yeah and i think that's really helpful for people to understand too that that's not what we're talking about it's not this enlightened state where you no longer have human emotions none of us get to escape the human experience but with what you're seeing you get to enjoy it more and have more grace available to you when you're having more challenging emotional experiences when your mood is lower you get to ride that out more gracefully is what i'm hearing absolutely yeah uh, I'm really enjoying reflecting on this metaphor of, of, of you living your life in a way, or once we're living your life in a way, <clears throat> excuse me, where it's kind of like the, the soundtrack is of a rock band, and yet there is this flute playing at all times. It kind of reminds me of what Greg Ellis was saying around the click track, like that flute is like a divine click track, mm -hmm. and it's always playing, sort of setting the tone, setting the tone of, of how to live your life in a, in, a, in a really fulfilling and beautiful way. And then I was thinking, because this is where my, how my mind works. I was thinking, I don't know if you've ever seen a movie called The Jerk with Steve Martin, where the movie begins, where he's kind of been adopted by an African-American family. And there's this huge African-American family all dancing on a porch that is really beautiful music and they've got this incredible innate sense of rhythm and steve martin has literally no rhythm <laughs> it's like really making these very awkward movements and i was thinking about how well if you could use this metaphor in such a way that you have this divine click track which is offering you the rhythm through which to live life that we kind of get caught up in our in the in the luggage of thinking and we build up a lot of luggage over time that, that when we really start to look in that direction or start to really try and get a sense of that divine click track, there will be an adjustment. There will be a point where we're trying to find our way <laughs> <laughs> in a sense, like Steve Martin trying to find his sense of rhythm. But that sense of rhythm through the realm of thought can actually look really challenging and difficult. It's like, oh, what am I doing here? And I'm kind of freaking out. I don't know how to make this adjustment. But just by looking in that direction and just trusting that that is the divine click track at, at some point will create a new rhythm and, and probably and I'm sure create new circuitry that we can live our life in, in, a, in a gentler, more fulfilling way. But it is interesting to think how we get kind of caught up in the rhythm of our thinking, which can be negative and, and traumatic and, and difficult. And yet there is this divine click track that flutes always playing. And it's such a beautiful thing to sort of trust and, and experience. So thank you for that. <laughs> you, you, you. You're welcome. <laughs> I think it's, that another great thing is that, like, even if I get caught up, you know, and suddenly I realize, oh my God, I'm listening to the rock band. You know, I was very stressed out about this. As soon as I realized that, I am back. So I'm not afraid about losing, you know, not hearing the flute because it's always there. Yeah. 
And in the yeah. past, I thought that I have to go into a certain state of the mind or, you know, relaxing. I need mm -hmm. to do a lot of techniques in order to get there, to connect with wisdom. And now I see it's not like that. I mean, I could, I don't know, I could be working and kind of stress out. And now that we are all at home, I could go and, I don't know, wash the dishes. And maybe washing the dishes, I settle down and I mm -hmm. see something new. So, yeah. So, so really at heart, you've got soul. You're not a rocker. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it is really freeing and liberating what you're saying as well to see that it, it's not through effort. It's not through personal will that we get to shift. It's, it's actually something that's natural to us and we do it all the time that our mind opens and relaxes and it's designed to do that. And that when we see how it works that way, it's easier to go with that natural rhythm within ourselves rather than to try and force it. And that when we're not open and when we are caught up, as you're saying, that just seeing that allows us to be more kind and gentle with ourselves because we understand what's happening. We understand it's not wrong or bad. It doesn't mean anything about us. And we can have kindness towards ourselves and hold space for us to have that human experience as well. It doesn't define us. And so at some point, uh, our true nature comes forward again and we feel more our natural state at that point. Yeah. It's almost, yeah, no, it's beautiful. I was going to yeah. flog that metaphor to death, but I think I'll leave it alone. Now. You're restraining yourself. I'm restraining myself. But it's almost like the through thought, there is a, we create a dissonance from that natural rhythm that is always there within us. And, and we innocently get caught up in that dissonance and think that's, that's what identifies us. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's where we yeah, suffer. But, but I think also that it's beautiful that even if we get caught up in our thinking, like thought is only like helping us to realize because we are, I, at least for me, when I get caught up, I start feeling bad, you know, or sad or worried or whatever. Oh, great, great signal. I know that I can trust my thinking in that moment. I can do something else. I, I could be gentle with myself, do whatever I, is there for me to do. So actually, even if I get caught up, I will be back. Yes. Like because when my experience is like harder because I'm very cocked up <laughs> at some point I will wake up yeah mm. it's so reassuring yeah. I'm so grateful for that capacity within myself <laughs> yeah thank goodness yeah me too <laughs> and <clears throat> excuse me that's what I didn't see before and I think that's one of the reasons why I was so hard on myself is that I didn't see the natural capacity to just get uncaught up. I thought I was responsible for getting myself uncaught up. And the more I would try to get uncaught up, the more caught up I would get. And I would think that that was just a personal failing on my part. Mm -hmm. So it is such a relief to be like, oh, the mind naturally gets uncaught up. That's how mm -hmm. it's designed. What a relief. What a relief. And also, you know, I, I thought at the beginning when I started in this understanding, that I have to be like very careful of not getting caught up. It was like yes. my job, you know? <laughs> and, and that was like a, like a huge mistake, you know, because it's not on me. That's right. I mean, and that was like a lot of effort from my part about not getting caught up. Okay, checking in, checking myself in like mm. constantly, like, how are you doing? Are you getting caught up? You know, it's like, <laughs> not that way. <laughs> It's a hyper vigilance that gets us yeah. more caught up, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's and it's innocently, and I had the exact same experience. I'm I'm using my intellect to stop get feeling caught up when it was always a case of that when I stop feeling caught up, it will be me not using my intellect. <laughs> my intellect will have kind of gone offline for a moment or two. Yeah. That's why yeah. it's so hard to figure this whole thing out for people because we're using the same machinery that got us into trouble in the first place. Exactly. We can't yeah. think our way out of it. Can't think our way out of it. And in my case, that I am a kind of, my husband says that I'm a, what's the name of this? A squirrel. <laughs> like, uh, because I, I think in a lot of things, you know, I do a lot of things, you know, constantly. So at first my mind was like, oh my God, like I have all this energy, what I do now, I mean, if I'm not the one who rules your world, you know, it's like, <laughs> and, but what I've seen, like through this all this time, is that when I leave my mind to do 
the work that is supposed to be done, you know, not the boss, you know, mm -hmm. just something that helps. I really like get a lot of more things done. You know, I have more information in my brain than ever. And I think because I had in the past a lot of energy of my mind judging everybody, myself, checking mm -hmm. in, you know, like a lot of stuff. So now there is a lot of more energy to be used in a way that is like a good way for me and for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it does. It allows you to be more productive, not less productive, ultimately, mm -hmm. but have less feeling of effort in that productivity, which is amazing. Yeah, I've experienced that, too. So is there anything else as well that we haven't covered that you think would that you would either like to share or that you think would be helpful for the listeners to hear? Uh, I don't think so. I think we have covered it all. OK. Ingus, anything else you want to add? Um, no, I, I've I've really enjoyed. <laughs> well, I've I've really thank you so much for sharing your story. It's been really insightful, um, and it's 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 really sort of stirred up my uh, my powers of reflection. I love this <laughs> metaphor, and I think that um, what you're pointing to is well, you've pointed to it in a very clear way, which I think is going to be really helpful for a lot of people um because you you are you know you're what you're pointing to is is an is for me is a perfect escape route from suffering we really suffer with that luggage of, of judgment and um, being able to let that go being able to see you know the people in our life be able to see their psychological innocence be able to see our own it's so liberating mm. so thank you for, for being so clear in, in how you shared that story i think it's wonderful yeah, thank you, Azul. It really is uh, so inspiring to hear your journey and the shift that you experienced. And I know that when people have that experiential shift within themselves, they're able to point others in that direction as well. So you're a wonderful teacher, uh, you're a wonderful practitioner, and I know that you're going to be able to help many people based on what you've seen be able to experience more of that hopefulness and liberation within themselves. So we're very grateful to have you here with us uh, sharing that and, and helping our listeners to look in the direction of their innate well-being and health and to relax into that, to relax into their humanness, to know that all of it, as you said, is part of the journey. It's all part of our health. There's not, <clears throat> excuse me, one part of it that's wrong. And that when we relax into that, we have that open mind that allows us to see more of what's true and what's real. Thank you very much for having me here. <laughs> I don't <laughs> have like so many nice words as you have because you always like reframe and explain things in a very lovely way. Like uh, I can't I, like help about that. I'm listening to you explain it, this and I'm like relaxing just hearing you both. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of difficult to be here. It's so always that. difficult to follow Rahini. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also want to acknowledge you as so you're doing this interview in at least it's at least your second language. I don't know if it's your third no, language, but I mean, no, it's my second. Your, this is not your first language, and you have been so clear and expressed so beautifully so that a kudos to you on that front too yeah, I wish, no, it's been thoroughly illuminating yeah i wish we could speak spanish so we could have done a spanish interview with you but my spanish isn't that good yet well i think it was perfect as it is my goodness yeah. if, if if you can do such a good job in your second language heaven knows where we would be <laughs> <laughs> in your first language we would be probably really totally zen out now i don't know well i am pretty zen out anyway yeah. so yeah i think that i think you yeah you did a beautiful job of of sharing what you were seeing which i think is so pivotal in this understanding and certainly you know if this is a podcast that we're we're looking in the direction of relationship to help people there. I think being able to see one's partner's psychological innocence in that way, it's huge. Absolutely. And, and what you pointed to so clearly, which we maybe don't say so overtly that we should, is that it's really the primary relationship is our relationship with self. And that it's through having a clear understanding of who we are truly 
the fullness of who we are, not just our psychology, but the spiritual nature of who we are that includes our psychology. It's through that relationship that healing happens. And through that healing, all the relationships in our life are impacted by that. And not just relationships in terms of people, but relationships with work, relationships with money, relationships with um, you know other aspects of our lives. Like every aspect of our life is going to be impacted by our relationship with self. And you pointed to that so beautifully, how that healing happens inwardly. It's not about the externals. It's not about our intellect. It's about that inner realization that all, allows us to have a shift in consciousness and, and every aspect of our life then looks different from there. So I'm, I'm excited for uh, how you're gonna bring this and express this more into the world. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah, it really like every area of my life has been changed because the main thing would be that in the past, I felt like broken, you know, that I needed to fix something. And then like my main objective in life was to fix me. So seeing that I don't need to be fixed was like the major thing, you know, mm -hmm. like, oh my God. Oh, it, it was like a brand new life. You know, and, and that's what I am enjoying. And that's what I, I hope everybody has a chance to enjoy at some point. Yeah. This brand yeah. new life with the same circumstances, but from a different point of view and, and everything starts to unfold differently. And as you said, like the relationship with work, with my daughter, with husband, with friends, with everybody, like everything has changed, but not in a way that I was trying to change it. Mm -hmm. it's just that everything like was in their perfect place in the perfect way yeah just like when we um you know the metaphor angus and i will often use is if we get a cut on the body it knows how to heal the body has the intelligence that knows what to do we're not trying to heal that cut and putting effort into healing it and and that's what i'm hearing is you saw the truth of your innate worth of your lovability of your belonging of your worthiness seeing that allowed that to ripple out into all areas of your life and it knows how to do that the intelligence behind life knows what to do you aren't the one doing it and i've heard you say that um, multiple times in this conversation that you see how you're not the doer in the way that you thought you were the doer previously and that's rather than being nihilistic or terrifying it's actually really a relief and liberating as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Yes, well, what I really hope that people hear when they listen to this episode is that really like it's not about you, you're okay, mm -hmm. you're okay, you're enough, your circumstances are in the one who tells you if you're enough or you're not enough, you are enough and life supports you. And you don't have to do anything to see this. You mm -hmm. will see it some way, somehow. Yeah, we already know it on some level. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. You have to, we have to remember. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's a remembering. Uh, well, thank you again, Azul. Beautiful. Really so grateful for your time. Yes, thank thanks, you. Azul. That's a beautiful place to end, I think. Mm -hmm.